Today I want to share three of my favorite light modifiers that I use when I'm trying to get that old Hollywood look. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here and recently I got on a kick where I was exploring old Hollywood lighting. I went back and I studied the masters. Horst, Harrell, Bull, and I, I was analyzing not only the styling and the set design, but in particular, their lighting. Now, these photographers, for the most part, were using hot lights, constant lights, tungsten lights. And so I wanted to see what could I do to emulate the feel of that lighting today, except for if I were using the tools we have available, which maybe would be LED lights or perhaps studio strobes. And so I wanna share with you what I discovered. There are three modifiers in particular that I find really give me that old Hollywood look, that beautiful quality of light. Those three modifiers are a Fresnel, an optical spot, and a Magnum reflector. And that's what I want to show you today. Now, by the way, if you are as in love with old Hollywood lighting as I am, you'll definitely wanna check out my lighting recipe guide dedicated to old Hollywood lighting. In this guide, I show you many, many setups and exactly how to recreate them from the modifiers to the number of light to the distance of light to the power of light and much more. So be sure to check that out. But in the meantime, let's take a look at these three unique modifiers in action. For our first setup, I would like to introduce you to a Fresnel modifier. Now Fresnels are what are actually used in lighthouses to focus and concentrate light. It's going to do the same thing for us. Now in the age of old Hollywood, the golden age of Hollywood, Fresnels were a modifier they'd use. So if you've ever seen a Mole Richardson Fresnel, it, it, it is a light modifier just like this that can focus the light. And so today we're going to be using the modern iteration of this, except for it's going to be for whatever we're using today, whether that's strobes or LED light sources. Now, if you've never heard the word Fresnel before, well, when it's written, it looks like Fresnel, just in case it's unfamiliar to you. It is fundamentally a lens that is then attached or put in front of your light and it allows you to concentrate the light. It has two different modes. It has flood where the light can spread everywhere as well as spot, which concentrates the light. What's beautiful about Fresnel light is it's this beautiful mix of hard and soft light because it's a hard light. It's concentrated. The shadow edges cast by the nose, for example, will be super crisp, but it's smooth on the skin. It's not as specular, so it's just, it's glowing and beautiful. And in many, many old Hollywood portraits, a Fresnel lens, a Fresnel light is what you were looking at. So let's talk about the setup that I'm working with here. I'm actually going to be using constant lights, much like they did in the golden age of Hollywood. These constant lights, however, are LED. I am shooting with a Nanlite Forza 500 as my light source, and then I have the Fresnel attachment in front of that, also with barn doors. Barn doors is a common old Hollywood modifier as well. It's commonly used in cinema today and it's used to block and control the light. I'm not going to be using the barn doors, but I am going to be using that Fresnel. And I have it about halfway between the spot and the flood. So it's not super concentrated on her face, but it's not spread out so much that it is bouncing around the room. So let's take a look at what just that constant LED light with the Fresnel on it is going to give us for beautiful light on her face. So you can see that gorgeous quality of light that's hard, but it's still flattering. Now, as I look back at other images of the time, very often the light was layered, perhaps a really defined rim light. Now, frequently their rim lights would be hard light sources, maybe with barn doors, but today we're going to take a twist on it. And I'm going to use some Nanlite Pavo tubes. These Pavo tubes are going to be perfect because I'm going to multitask them to be rim lights and hair lights. So I'm going to add that next. I have two on the left-hand side of the frame and two on the right-hand side of the frame. What they'll do is they'll light on the side of her arm, separate out her hair, and because of the angle I have them at, they'll also light the top of her hair. This is really important because in many old Hollywood images, there was a hair light. Well, I don't necessarily want to have to boom out a hair light over top. So the position of these Nan lights is going to act as both rim light and hair light. So let me add those to the equation. So far so good, it's beautiful, but I think the background is a little bit flat. 
very often you would see the subject being shot on uh, the back lot or on the backstage where you'd see elements in the background to create a little bit of a layer or visual interest or you would see a slice of light across the background or some sort of interesting texture, maybe another light through a, a Kukaloris for a little bit of texture. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the background a little bit more interesting by adding a gradient. So we're going to add our final Nanlite Papo tube on a floor stand behind my subject. And I have it very close to the background so that it gives me a gradient. It's brighter lower in the scene and it fades to shadow near the top of the frame. You can see that the addition of the background light has given us a little bit more depth and a little bit more visual interest. So what did we end up with in the end? Our main light is a Nanlite Force of 500 with a Fresnel modifier. Then we have Pavo tubes, Nanlite Pavo tubes acting as rim lights, two on either side of her. And by the way, those rim lights and hair lights, the reason we have we've have two Nanlites on either side is to make it a little bit brighter. Although we could do so with a single tube if that's all you had available. And then finally, our last light is another Pavo tube on the floor, really close to the background to give us a bit of a gradient. Now, one thing I want to note is because these are constant lights, you do wanna be careful of your camera's settings. I wanna make sure, for me personally, that I'm not shooting slower than say one 200th of a second. And I usually turn on my image stabilization because this is a constant light, there's no strobes to freeze the subject in place. So for this shot, I was shooting at 1 200th of a second, F4, ISO 640. For these images, I'm going to be shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 24 to 105 lens. I'm going to focus on getting head and shoulder shots, focus on that beautiful hair and makeup, which I wanted to mention as well. Now, this lighting is still going to be beautiful no matter what subject you have in this scene. And it, it, I think it kind of goes without saying that obviously what you put in front of your camera is really what helps sell that old Hollywood look. So yes, the lighting is stunning, but putting it together with this hair and makeup and wardrobe is what makes it truly look like it's from the golden age of Hollywood. All right, so I love what the lighting looks like and I think the model looks stunning. So now I'm gonna go get a beautiful shot. Okay, so can you do me a favor and can you turn a little bit more to your left and then roll your shoulder forward, beautiful, and chin back towards me, great. The next modifier we're going to check out is an optical spot. They go by a variety of different names, op optical spots, optical snoots, zoom spots, spots, like anything in that category. So notice that one of the key words I'm saying is spot. Think spotlight. In old Hollywood images, often there would be a kiss of a spotlight in the background or something, sometimes even more dramatic, like Fred Astaire uh, walking down the stairs with a big spotlight on him. And so we are going to emulate the feel of the spotlight from old Hollywood images, but we're going to do it with a modern twist. Now, modern twist number one to this setup is that we are going to be using studio strobes. I'm going to be using a combination of Profoto D1s and D2s for this setup. Whereas in old Hollywood, hot lights, tungsten hot lights would be the light source of choice. All right, so let's talk about the specialty modifier though. The optical spot. This one in particular is the Westcott optical spot and I worked with Westcott to design it. How it works is there is a lens that actually attaches to the front of the modifier. There's one that comes with it. What it does is it amplifies and concentrates the light and it allows you to create really beautiful, tight beams of light. In addition, you can actually put something called a gobo in between the light and the lens and project patterns and shapes upon the subject. Now we're not using the gobos in this instance, but we are going to use the focused, crisp quality of this light. For this setup, I'm going to use two different optical spots. And the reason I wanna do that is we're going to do one on the face so I can show you the quality of light when it illuminates the subject. And then we're going to use the second optical spot on the background because I wanna show you the type of shapes that it can create. This look in particular, I often saw in the work of Harrell. You'd see kind of circular or oval shapes of light on the background to create a little bit of visual interest. And that's what we're going to do here. But let's first start off with our main light. So I've got that Profoto D2. I've got the Westcott optical spot with the kit lens on it. And I have no gobos, no modifiers, just this beautiful hard light on the face. You're going to notice just how crisp it is. Take a quick shot. 
I place our main light in a paramount lighting position. What that means is if you look at the shadow of the nose, it falls directly underneath the nose. You may have guessed by the name that this was a common lighting technique used when they're photographing the actors and actresses for paramount pictures. Okay, so you can see that that quality of light is hard, it's crisp, it's glowing on our subject, and I'm going to build in this scene a little bit more dramatically. Now, what are the other elements that could make this scream old Hollywood lighting? Well, of course, I could add a hair light. We're going to add a one by four foot strip softbox from above to kiss the side of her hair down her arm and create some separation. This technique here, we're using a grid on the strip softbox to control the spill of light. So it's really just going to be a hair light rather than spreading around the room and lighting other parts of the scene. So I'm just going to add the hair light. The hair light looks gorgeous and it adds a ton of separation for the subject from the background. So, so far so good and honestly, you could create an image with just those two lights and channel the old Hollywood feel. But I wanna add a little bit something else to the scene. So this is where our second optical spot is going to come into the equation. On the right hand side of the frame, I've added that second optical spot with the kit lens that it comes with and I'm going to use it to create a circular oval shape on the background. This is going to be really beautiful because it will create visual interest, but also separate our subject from the background. I saw this often in photographs uh, by Harrell, whether photographing men or women. So let's flip that on. This is so beautiful and so interesting, and it's unusual. It's not a typical modifier, but it is something that was used quite commonly. All right, so, so far we have three lights, and again, Three lights would be enough, but I wanted to show you a variation. Not all old Hollywood shots need to be lower key, and so I'm going to add a fill light into the equation. I'm going to add a bare bulb, and all it's doing is lifting up all the shadows in the scene. This gives me a lot of variability because I can turn the power down really low if I want it super subtle, or if I want the shot to look a little bit higher key, I can turn up the power. So let's start with it really low. This fill light isn't making a drastic difference on the scene. What's really nice is it gives a little bit more fill to the hair and the optical spot I have on my subject really right now is pretty concentrated just on her face and her torso. But by adding the fill light, if I choose a wider composition, it'll still give me a little bit of light and fill throughout the rest of the body. So it'll bring the eye to the subject with the main light, but the fill will make sure I have detail throughout the entire frame. I think that the lighting looks beautiful, but now it's time to get the shot, which is a combination of the expression in the pose in addition to the lighting. I'm going to look at the photographs of Harrell and Horst and Bull and many of the classic photographers and study their posing because it wasn't overly rigid or repetitive. There was actually a lot of experimentation. So I'm going to look to them for inspiration. For our final setup, we are going to be using a magnum reflector. You may be familiar with a silver dish reflector, which is usually used to control the spill of a hard light. A magnum reflector is a little bit larger, it's a little bit softer, and it has this beautiful finish in it, which is a little bit smoother on the skin. So this is how we have a focused hard light modifier, but it's not nearly as focused or as defined as you would get with a Fresnel or an optical spot. But it really gives the quality of light that you would see in old Hollywood because the modifier is a very similar shape to one that they used. If you look up a Mole Richardson focusing scoop, this is the very same shape, approximate size, although they did come in different sizes, but similar shape and size as our Magnum reflector here. So we're going to channel that same quality of light. You'll also notice that on the front of the Magnum reflector, I have a piece of diffusion. This is basically a sock that I usually use for a beauty dish, but I've multi-purposed it here. And what it does is it cuts down on a little bit of specularity. It makes the skin just a little bit smoother. Often on focusing scoops, you would see a piece of diffusion in front of that as well to soften the light. All right, so let me show you what I'm working with with the Magnum reflector and the sock. So it's hard light, but a little less specular and it's at a little bit of a higher angle to carve out her beautiful cheekbones. We've added a set here uh, using champagne toned curtains to give us a little bit more depth, even though we're only going to be using a single strobe. 
already the light is really beautiful and glowing and this would be fine to shoot as is, especially if you want something that's a little bit more of a high key look. However, I'd like to add a variation to this. I would like to control the light just a little bit. I feel like my eye is being drawn to the top left hand side of the frame. And so to control the light, I'm going to add something called a flag. A flag is just basically something you use to block light. But I'm going to be using a Matthews flag here. It's actually a frame that fits into a knuckle on a C-stand. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to use it to block light off the top left hand corner of the shot. I feel like this is going to focus your eye more towards the subject. No, of course, you could do something similar to this in post. You could simply add a vignette, darken down the edges. But with hard light, it's gonna be really easy to achieve this sort of effect in camera as well. The light is a little bit more dramatic. It's a little bit more concentrated on the subject, but it's still really, really beautiful and sculpted. So what I wanted you to take away from this setup is that in the other shots, I was using multiple strobes or multiple constant lights in order to create the old Hollywood look. But many times they were just using a single tungsten hot light. They didn't need huge, dramatic, elaborate setups. But what sold that look and which, what made it look high end was the set, the styling, the hair and makeup, which is exactly what we have going on here. So we're channeling that look by using a modifier that will create a similar quality of light as well as bringing the styling together. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on expression, pose, and get the shot. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at these three unique modifiers. Now, they may not be exactly what was used in old Hollywood glamour, yet you can see that they really channel what they were trying to achieve with this quality of light. If you want to see the gear used in the making of these images, be sure to check out the links in the description below and visit Adorama.com. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about old Hollywood lighting, check out learnwithlindsay.com. Thank you guys. Give me some love in the comments and I will see you next time.